Hi, uh, thank you. Um, good morning and good afternoon to everyone joining us. Uh, I would like to welcome everyone and thank you for attending this event today on the first day of the High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development, the so-called HLBF. My name is Sasha Urechko, I'm the Deputy Permanent Representative of Slovenia to the UN. I have the pleasure to participate on behalf of Ambassador Maloburg, who unfortunately could not join us this morning. The permanent mission of Slovenia to the UN and IRCAI, the International Research Center of Artificial Intelligence under the auspices of, of UNESCO, we have been working closely together ever since the inception of the center. The collaboration has intensified this year with a series of virtual events dedicated to artificial intelligence solutions for the SDGs, this being the third event. Our first event was in February, where we um, presented AI solutions for the SDGs. Then we had a second event in May at the margins of the STI forum. Both events can be viewed on the YouTube channel of, of the IRCAI, uh, as they still remain highly relevant. Today's event is a continuation of the themes presented so far. With each new event, we are adding a mosaic to a rich web of solutions that the artificial intelligence technology is creating for us. The permanent mission has dedicated a lot of time and efforts in trying to support this work, and we, made, and we remain committed to further advance the agenda in a way that is most beneficial to all of us, and where technological advancement and development truly leave no one behind. This will become even more important with the upcoming processes within the General Assembly, among them the Secretary General's report on our common agenda, and taking forward the proposals that are contained in this report. Let me stop here and invite our high level ex and expert panelists to tell us more about the work of the center and of the importance of collaboration in the field of technology, especially AI in the context of sustainable development. First, I would like to invite Mr. Tafik Jalassi, Assistant Director General for Communication and Information at UNESCO. Mr. Jalassi, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. I'm very delighted to join you this afternoon for the launch of the second call of IRCAI's Global Top 100 initiative. This initiative aims at identif identifying innovative solutions that leverage artificial intelligence to address the sustainable development goals. And it is very closely aligned with UNESCO function as a laboratory of ideas. Building upon last year's work, UNESCO and DIRCAI have now updated the framework for the identification of projects. There are many promising avenues for the use of AI to support the achievement of the SDGs. AI is, for example, applied to increase access to justice, promote open educational resources, and narrow gender divides online and offline. Through this work, we aim to showcase promising AI initiatives that integrate sustainable development goals in their business models and that are also aligned with the human rights. For instance, Logically Intelligence, which is one of the outstanding projects of the 2021 Global Top 100 edition, uses AI to uncover and address harmful misinformation and disinformation to provide access to trustworthy information and protect civil, civic discourse. It makes an important contribution to the question of how to accelerate the achievement of the sustainable development goals through AI in partnership with the private sector. Another example presented is Fair Forward, which has developed video assisted COVID-19 chatbot with the government of Rwanda to offer basic services to millions of people including illiterate and digitally excluded citizens. This project started by addressing a fundamental barrier in AI development, namely the lack of training data by collecting and making available representative training data sets in different languages. 
Once this gap in training data was plugged, natural resource processing based AI systems could be developed to strengthen access to information in local languages. UNESCO remains committed to the development of a human rights based, ethical, and sustainable AI innovation. We have seen great strides made in this area in the past few years, including the adoption this past November by the 193 member states of UNESCO of the recommendation on the ethics of artificial intelligence. I wish to congratulate IRCAI on its successful mission since its launch to provide research, advocacy, capacity building, and to disseminate information about AI. UNESCO is proud to work with IRCAI as a category two center, which informs our member states in their efforts to meet the sustainable development goals. We look forward to the exciting solutions that will be identified through this call this year. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I would like to thank Mr. Jalassi for his remarks, um, as well as for the continuous support to the work of IRCAI and participation at the events we have been co-organizing so far. We only hope to continue and strengthen this great collaboration. Thank you so much. Thanks. Next on the speakers list are representatives of the government of Slovenia. First, we will hear from Mr. Matias Kreintz. The State Secretary at Ministry of Education, Science and Sport of the Republic of Slovenia. State Secretary, the floor is yours. Thank you, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. It's a great pleasure for me to have the opportunity to formally introduce the International Research Center on Artificial Intelligence under the auspices of UNESCO, hosted in Ljubljana. Artificial intelligence is a technological force rarely seen in history. It has advanced rapidly in the last five years. On the other hand, the world is lagging behind on new and sustainable development goals. However, it seems like that the use of AI could increasingly help measure these massive goals as more and more data on each challenge is becoming available to the scientific community. Slovenia is proud to have assumed a leadership position in the response to this discrepancy by connecting AI and the SDGs with the use of IRCAI. Slovenia wishes to contribute to the SDGs by making the world's largest sustainable solutions platform even more effective and impactful. Slovenia is proud to drive its collective ability to transform its economy and society to put it on a more sustainable path. Ethical questions across the globe are being taken into consideration as AI rapidly transforms various spheres of human agency. Slovenia is equally proud to have established IRCAI as a focal point among different stakeholders and as a network of experts and knowledge hotspots, not just in Europe, but across the world. We must be at the forefront of coordinating international efforts towards building a coherent AI research system that supports sustainable solutions. Via IRCAI and its new Nixus network of experts, Slovenia is proudly involved in the leadership of research and development in AI for sustainable development, as well as policy creation and decision-making bodies that are doing work in the field of sustainability, such as UNESCO, OECD, and the Council of Europe. Its networks, initial partners, are coming from Slovenia, Australia, Andorra, Brazil, Chile, Ghana, Iceland, Italy, Kenya, Mexico, Netherlands, Nigeria, Pakistan, South Africa, Spain, Sweden, Tanzania, United Kingdom, and USA. IRCA's outreach business and impact efforts were seen in the 2021 edition of the list of the top 100 coach projects in solving problems related to the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals through the use of AI. Participant applicants come from all five geographic regions, Africa, Europe and Americas, Asia and the Pacific, and the Middle East. The main aim of this effort was to scope and showcase solutions from around the world 
and contribute to the SDGs by making the world's largest platform for sustainable solutions even more effective and impactful. Solutions are listed and applicable and can credibly solve a real development problem with an emphasis on ethics. This is where the Nexus network and partners across the world which will showcase solutions in the new call in 2022, in which IRCA is listed in UNESCO, is the creation of a new exciting framework for artificial intelligence and sustainable development goals innovation framework. This event is delivering on the promises and the potential given to us by research and science in the field of AI and sustainable development in an international multi-stakeholder setting across the world. IRCAI can provide an excellent opportunity for dialogue among AI experts, sustainability experts, policymakers, researchers, journalists, executives, and the general public to develop a deeper understanding of the complex field of AI to address the UN grand challenges. Let us work together to create opportunities in these challenging times by making the most of what artificial intelligence and its science can offer. Join us in action and invite our institutions across the board to apply their solutions to the new top 100 call for proposals. We look forward to further strengthening our close cooperation with the Global South to jointly address challenges and capitalize on opportunities to promote sustainable development across the globe. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, State Secretary Kreins, uh, for your remarks and for your support to our event today. Uh, our next, next speaker that we had planned was uh, Mr. Samuel Jbogar, State Secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Slovenia. However, unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, he could not join us. Uh, on his behalf, we have with us Ambassador Veronica Stabe, the contact point for IRCAI at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ambassador Stabe, thank you for joining us. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sasha. Uh, I'm very much delighted to be participating at this high-level political forum side event. Uh, Agenda 2030 is our guidebook when it comes to the path of global development until 2030. Unfortunately, as also stated in the Secretary General's progress report on sustainable development, the actions we were taking so far brought us to the point where years or even decades of development progress have been halted and reversed. The report also states that multiple and interlinked global crisis we are facing is putting the very viability of achieving the sustainable development goals by 2030 at great risk. Therefore, an urgent rescue effort is needed for a rapid changing course grounded in a comprehensive response to this interlinked global crisis and a renewed commitment to multilateralism and international cooperation. Slovenia firmly believes in effective multilateralism. Contemporary challenges dictate the need for a strong, rules-based and inclusive multilateral system with the United Nations at its core Dialogue, cooperation, and mutual trust can help effectively address challenges that require collective action. We also believe that eradication of poverty, sustainable development, and respect for human rights serve as building blocks for peaceful and resilient societies. Slovenia is at the forefront of the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. This year, we ranked among 15th among 163 states. And we are increasingly aware of the need to deepen the cooperation and knowledge sharing within the global community. Establishment of the Slovenia-based International Research Center on Artificial Intelligence under the auspices of UNESCO was a step in this direction. IRCAI is dedicated to the support for the development of AI-based solutions to achieve the SDGs and to the promotion of responsible, human-centered and human rights-based artificial intelligence in all spheres. Today's event will be opportunity to hear more about the work of IRCAI, the solutions they and their partners have identified so far and their plans for the future. 
I'm particularly pleased that this event is a continuation of a broader collaboration IRCAI has established with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Slovenia during its almost two years of existence so far. As the before mentioned Secretary General's report on the SDGs also states, higher technologies industries had a better performance and recovered faster, providing a strong example of how important technological in innovation is for achieving sustainable development. The UN is starting to operationalize the Secretary General's Our Common Agenda report, especially the proposed global digital roadmap where AI is one of the key issues to be addressed. The fact is that the artificial intelligence is a technology that is transforming every walk of life. The question is not, will it develop further? The real question is, how can we influence its development so that it serves humanity and helps us address the too many challenges modern society is trying to resolve? IRCA's mission is to connect best researchers and projects and help them build a community dedicated to solve sustainability challenges by facilitating international multi-stakeholder discussions, which have led to the establishment of thematic dialogue at many levels. The government of Slovenia fully stands behind ECA's mission and offers its full support to the work of the center in our common goal to get back on track with achieving the SDGs. To continue to make progress and take immediate action, Cooperation is key at the international level among all stakeholders who bring their knowledge, experience, and solutions to the table. It has never been easier yes. to collaborate at the international level to achieve concrete results. And today there are opportunities that go beyond dialogue, such as participating in the top 100 program or joining the IRCA network of excellence. I look forward to hearing more about the specific project at today's event and wish us all a very successful high level political forum. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Stabe, for participating at our event today on behalf of State Secretary Spoker. Uh, with this, we have concluded the opening part of today's event, and I will now and I will now hand over the moderation of the rest of the event, including the round tables to Ms. Mikhaela Chernko, Chief Communications Officer and Partnership Lead at IRCAI. Mikhaela, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to all the esteemed speakers of the first part of this uh, event. So good morning and good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone hears me well. I would now like to welcome you to the second part of this event which is a roundtable discussion on the new call for top 100 solutions for AI and SDGs and the new SDG innovation framework for AI innovation. Um, as introduced, I'm Michaela Czernko, Chief Communications Officer and will be moderating this roundtable. Um, the topic of today's discussion is the second edition of the top 100 call. And, um, we want to look at the past, present, and future. So last year's call was very successful. It attracted applications from all regions of the United Nations with solutions that are applicable and solve real life world problems. There were projects that covered all 17 SDGs and came from a variety of sectors. So building on last year's methodology, a discussion was started with UNESCO to create an improved evaluation framework for artificial intelligence. With our panelists today, we will explore the lessons learned and uh, look at the new uh, innovation framework for AI innovation and see how the panelists see the future potential of these initiatives. Unfortunately, the last year's initiatives representative, uh, Dr. Vian Sharif from Nature Alpha is unable to join us. Uh, but we count on all our other um, colleagues in this roundtable discussion to adequately represent the perspective of last year's applications. So our goal today is to explore ways in which AI, with particular attention to ethical aspects, can support the achievement of the SDGs through initiatives such as the 100 and the UNESCO Innovation Framework. With that, I would like to open the debate by first asking the panelists to briefly introduce themselves in the order listed on the agenda. There we go. 
is uh, should I go first? Uh, that okay. Be, that <laughs> okay. Be John and okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks very much. Um, thank you for uh, opening the uh, debate so clearly. Uh, so my name is John Shaw Taylor. I'm the director of EACI and uh, also professor and uh, UNESCO chair of AI at uh, UCL. Um, my role in terms of research has been in machine learning and AI, uh, and I'm also working with UNESCO and through EACI in terms of uh, how AI can be applied in terms of sustainable development. We're also developing a new master's program on that topic. Uh, which I think will be uh, a useful um, way to increase the uh, uh, number of people coming through with the education necessary to take the steps that we need in terms of applying AI for sustainable development. Thank you. We are waiting for Pratik to join a bit later, so maybe Tommaso, you can take over. Sure. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. So my name is uh, Tommaso Balbo di Vinadio. Uh, I have, um, I would say, three different uh, yet complementary hats, right? I'm a professor here in Paris at Sciences Po. I've been teaching courses on digital transformation and agility in public sector, I would say, for the last seven years. So that's the first hat. Then uh, I've been working for the last 18, 19 years, international development. Uh, mainly with the World Bank, increasingly with the United Nations on issues uh, related to governance, public sector, and increasingly digital transformation, in innovation, use of technology. And then uh, the third hat uh, is my work with startup, uh, um, which is quite interesting for me and allows me, and we're going to touch a little bit upon this subject, uh, to learn from uh, you know great organizations, startups, uh, uh, and, and, and apply principles and approaches to, to public sector. Uh, uh, regarding this, uh, this really interesting project, uh, I, uh, I've been working with John, uh, Pratik, and Devor uh, to like, produce uh, the innovation framework. Very pleased to be here today. Hello to Katie. Okay. Uh, so Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Katie Evans. I am a doctor in philosophy and artificial intelligence ethics. Uh, I'm based in Paris, but I'm Canadian. Uh, I, I have many hats as well. Uh, so I'm lead analyst at IRCAI, but I'm also a consultant at UNESCO and the IEEE. Um, and I had uh, the pleasure of uh, writing a comic book that will come out soon at UNESCO on emerging themes uh, in the ethics of artificial intelligence. My role at IRCAI, especially within the parameters of this panel, uh, was that I was responsible for the analysis and subsequent report of the IRCAI Global top 100. And I'm looking forward to sharing some of my insights with all of you today. And last but not least, Massimo. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Massimo Preziuso. I'm uh, the chair of Business Impact Council in IRCAI. I have been working with John and Davor for the last years to also to build this uh, ecosystem. I'm happy to be here. I'm in my life also, I'm a lecturer in finance in uh, British University now, and I'm uh, happy to discuss with you the next steps of this brilliant organization. Thank you very much. And uh, if I see correctly, we also have Pratik join us. Uh, so I would ask our technical moderator, Simon, to uh, join him in the panel. There we go. So this is our full round table. Pratik, we just finished the round of introductions and we're just missing you. Hi. Hi, Michaela. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Sounds good. Uh, one second. Let me put my phone on mute because I have Zoom here. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I think uh, so at my end, I'm a program specialist uh, leading the work on AI and digital transformation within UNESCO's communication and information sector. It's been a pleasure working with IRCAI on uh, understanding the previous uh, 
previous calls findings, then reworking the framework to include some of the ethical and human rights concern, and importantly, also around gender equality. So I believe this would be a more robust framework this time around. And uh, and as uh, I think some of the people mentioned, it's an iterative process. So it's a process where innovation is uh, is moving forward fast, and AI is developing. So so we're really looking forward to to seeing the findings this year, and work on the methodology and so on again. Uh, thank you. Looking forward to the conversation. Thank you very much. Uh, exactly the summary already of what we are going to be discussing. So first, um, let's start with last year. And I would invite John um, to give us an idea on the quality of the solutions proposed in last year's top 100 uh, cohort um, from the perspective of AI quality. So, uh, yeah, I think this is a really interesting question because uh, to some extent, the aim is not uh, overtly to measure AI quality. That is not what this is about. Uh, however, it's interesting to kind of think about that. Um, so I think in terms of innovating um, in the application of AI, actually, there's a lot of innovation in just using off the shelf AI AI that's been developed perhaps with a different application in mind, but seeing the connection, putting it together with the challenge and uh, seeing where that takes you and what kind of performance that can deliver on uh, a more, let's say, particular application in terms of sustainable development. However, I think, you know, it's a chicken uh, and egg process. It may be that when you do that, you discover there are shortfalls in the particular off the shelf solution, AI solution that you've taken, and perhaps from further development of that or some refinement of it may actually deliver enhanced performance. Or indeed, it may lead you to think about a completely different uh, extension of the methodology that actually requires new AI. And I think in all of the applications, we saw different aspects of these. Some were using very much state of the art uh, AI. Um, which was to some extent off the shelf, but developed for the particular application. And some were proposing uh, novel AI entirely. And I think these, you know, AI is a new field. It's developing all the time. And I think there are other aspects of AI that need further development, particularly when we think about engaging with humans in what we're calling a human centric approach, um, which typically has not characterized perhaps many of the solutions that have been developed uh, in other domains. And I think that really opens the question of, you know, where we're going with AI. And I believe that this can also be, this call can also be a driver for, uh, you know, um, starting new research in areas that will be most uh, useful in terms of taking forward the application of AI and sustainable development, so that there will be both the application, new applications, but also new development of AI itself. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Um, so I believe now that we touched a bit on the impact on sustainable development, of course, which is the main goal, the main criteria of the top 100, and then we have the quality of AI. But then there's also other issues. Um, and I'd like to call Katie to give us a little bit of what she identified that does not relate to the two mentioned um, domains, but there were some outcomes and issues and results. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, I think to keep things brief, I'll mention just two that I noticed uh, that are kind of, you know, broadly speaking, a philosophical analysis. Uh, the first is, is to look at to what degree projects tightly track the SDG criteria, which is to say the difference between shoehorning or accidental overlap, um, or how much SDG goals figured in the foundational principles of the project or venture. So how much we actually set out to satisfy SDG goals or address them in, in the conception of the project itself. And I say this because a lot of the applications um, pertain to sectors like health or industry. And these are sectors where AI uh, kind of more easily thrives, right? 
We saw less from clean water and sanitation, life below water or zero hunger. Uh, and so it's sort of this difference between a priori versus a posteriori alignment with SDG goals. Both are good from a utilitarian perspective, but maybe intentions count. Uh, the second point is uh, what I, I sort of a bit about technological solutionism. I think there's a foundational difference between technological solutions to the SDGs and an SDG oriented technological solutionism, which I know is a lot of words. Uh, but, but my point here is that automation is not always the answer. And maybe we can take a more reasoned and holistic approach as to the need for an AI application in a given sector and whether AI is truly the best tool for this job. Thank you very much. Um, probably just uh, shining a light on a few of these um, topics identified, we sh it's, we're ready to look into the new framework. Um, so Tommaso, would you give a brief presentation and maybe with a little bit of effort how these uh, questions as Katie identified were uh, taken into account? Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to be uh, quite uh, brief, even though I'm, I'm Italian, I'm going to like speak <laughs> to, to the point. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really interesting assignment. And, and as you all know, it's one of the uh, most discussed subject uh, nowadays. Uh, how can technology, in this case, AI, uh, you know, solve complex problems and address uh, SDGs? So I, I was really pleased to work with the team uh, on uh, um, upgrading uh, the, the framework that IRCAI and UNESCO really developed. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna structure like really briefly my answer into three parts, uh, the why, uh, the how, uh, and the what um, to, to answer your, your, your question, Mihaela. Uh, why, I mean, Yes, again, it's it's really an, int an interesting and important uh, subject, right? We we should all uh, be thinking about it. What the, what the, the 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 driving question I want to like uh, repeat that is uh, um, uh, how can we create a framework, a system to uh, identify initiatives that can uh, you know address SDGs by uh, integrating artificial intelligence and what we also added in this like drawing question is uh, they have to integrate artificial intelligence uh, uh, efficiently, inclusively and responsibly. I think those three words are quite important and we already uh, touch upon the ethical AI part, right? Uh, uh, basically, uh, we, we, we also like thought about the several uh, considerations uh, as a basis foundation for developing this framework. Uh, one of which uh, is, uh, um, uh, again, ethical AI. Uh, John discussed a little bit uh, the, 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 the last call, uh, and there were like really amazing, uh, outstanding, uh, I think the, the terminology is, uh, initiative projects, uh, you know, addressing SDGs by integrating um, uh, artificial intelligence. However, uh, few, and I, I'm talking about the report that was produced by IRCAI, uh, few initiatives and projects were able to really articulate uh, what were the risks uh, related to uh, AI. Uh, few were able to really uh, discuss and unpack the ethical uh, AI part. So this was a, a, a major uh, uh, remark and consideration for us to develop the innovation framework. Uh, second consideration is private sector. Uh, the main question here, and I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the basis for uh, an interesting discussion, is what is uh, the incentive for the private sector to do so, to again address SDGs by integrating uh, artificial intelligence. And, and, and probably uh, some of you uh, have looked at the short uh, version of the document. Uh, in the larger uh, version of this document, uh, we, 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 we uh, you know, uh, identified some, some like findings from the literature review. It was interesting for me to see that the private investment in artificial intelligence uh, uh, in 2021 uh, totaled around 95 billion. However, and in 2022 probably is gonna be even more, but how much of this money uh, uh, is contributing to advancement of the SDGs? Again, what is the incentive for private sector to, to, to do good? So this is uh, another remark and consideration that help us 
uh, think and, 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 and for us to develop the innovation framework. Then we thought uh, a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, having uh, solid criteria. Again, there was an innovation framework, but uh, like the intention was to kind of upgrade, improve, there was a little uh, room for improvement, uh, the uh, evaluation uh, criteria, and I would say the, the criteria and, and, and the evaluation metrics, so two complementary things. And then also think, and I, I think this is gonna be uh, probably uh, an interesting discussion, uh, how to use this framework uh, and, 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 and thinking more about the role of FIRCAI, right, using this framework, and, and in terms of like supporting, coaching perhaps uh, those, those initiatives. So this is the why, how, uh, I'm not gonna get into uh, like the methodology, uh, the literature review, uh, so on and so forth. What I wanted to like highlight is that uh, we uh, did the lit, uh, we looked at the literature uh, on um, uh, the connection between SDGs, artificial intelligence, the AI developments, but uh, interestingly, and, and I want to highlight this aspect, we looked also at the startup world, right? The hackathon. I think what's what's interesting for us, and it gets back to the point on the incentives for private sector to, to do good, is how do you uh, create a sustainable business? How do you make profit while also doing good? Uh, I think it's it's an interesting topic for 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 discussion. The what uh, and very briefly. Um, um, uh, you, you already looked at the document, you're going to have uh, time to, to do so. Uh, very briefly, what we came up with is eight criteria, right? And, and, and many of these criteria were already in the, in, in, in the framework or were kind of implicit or, or, or hidden in the framework. And we wanted to, based on the remarks that I already said, another like consideration, we wanted to like really lay them uh, uh, out quite, quite clearly. Those criteria, and I'm not going to get into detail, but probably we're going to touch upon some of them, are the vision. And this is what, uh, you know, Katie was talking about. Uh, what is the vision behind uh, the initiative? Uh, uh, even before thinking about the technology, uh, well, what is the alignment? This is the terminology that she used, uh, by which a company, an initiative, want to, uh, you know, uh, address a specific SDG. The, the appropriate use of uh, AI with uh, different criteria and evolution metrics, uh, the, the, the system to monitor, uh, right, the, 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 the impact, uh, the transferability slash scalability of uh, the initiative, the um, uh, section on the uh, human rights and ethical AI that is quite important and it should be uh, laid out uh, clearly for, for, for reviewers. To, to facilitate exactly the review of the initiatives, but also for the initiatives themselves to understand, uh, and this we can discuss this, how to get to uh, an outstanding position. How can a company, uh, you know, uh, uh, can integrate uh, uh, artificial intelligence and do so uh, responsibly and, and, and ethically. And then we, we also, like uh, what I already mentioned, we, 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 we wanted to highlight the, the, the the, the business profit, profitability part. So we added the section on this uh, and also the, the implementation team that is related to, 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 to this point because it allows a company to uh, you know, uh, develop a sustainable business. And we also uh, wanted to highlight the last uh, uh, criterion, the one on diversity and inclusion that is really, really key and really, really important. So I'm gonna stop here without uh, yeah, spending too much time on, on the details. Thank you. And thank you, Tommaso, uh, for highlighting the complexity of, of this process. And I think we would need a lot more time to really go into all those components, all those criteria, because it's just looking at the ethics uh, part of it, the sustainability of business solutions, the uh, scalability, it's it's really big. We, we have a large thing to think about. But I think I'm going to go to the, to the core idea um, that you seem to focus on, which is the vision of the, um, of the projects applying and so on. So now I would like to ask Pratik, what would be the vision behind um, UNESCO's involvement in this, the wish, the idea, and um, also practically speaking, how will this be communicated globally to member states? So, thank you very much. Sure, thank you. So, so we are in 2022, which is the decade 
two years into the decade of action for the SDGs. And uh, we are woefully lagging behind in achieving what we, uh, what we had hoped in 2015 to achieve by 2030. And um, so, so that's, that's one big problem that we face globally. And the idea of this framework was, how can we crowd in new initiatives, ideas, solutions that can leverage technologies like AI, but not only AI, to help address the sustainable development goals. So that's the overall idea. But when you dive into AI and innovation and SDGs and so solutions like that, what we tend to see is there are issues related to human rights. So there is bias, discrimination, there are challenges for freedom of expression, there is lack of diversity, and there's a huge bunch of literature on that, uh, whether it's talking about facial recognition systems to talking about recommender uh, algorithms. Uh, these kind of issues are popping up dime a dozen everywhere. The second issue is around data and uh, the biases that come from programmers themselves. So this is something that we also wanted to address, which is, do you have enough checks on the kind of AI systems that you're using? Have you addressed the robustness? It's not just using AI as a buzzword. Well, any, anything today can be qualified, can qualify as an AI system. You have to really think deeper whether it is an appropriate AI system, what kind of data it has built upon, uh, whether it is robust enough and so on. So I think that, that is something which the framework also tries to do. Uh, in terms of the biases entering from the programmer side, it focuses on diversity as well uh, and sensitization of the teams towards ethical and human rights issues. And finally, an element that we often miss is contextualization. We, uh, we talk about AI solutions developed in a particular context, uh, geographical location, or for a particular problem. And then the next day we are starting to use the same solution, same set of algorithms, same set of data in a completely different context. And that is problematic because uh, you've seen AI systems being used, for instance, in the public sector, which has denied benefits to thousands of people, which has, you know, put people into poverty. And these these solutions uh, to develop these solutions, we need to be responsible. So all these things uh, through the different categories, the framework tries to put on the table. And this is our agenda. We want to highlight these issues. And for UNESCO, what would be the most exciting? would be if this framework is used not only for the IRCAI top 100 call, but for thousands of other hackathons going on around the world. Because for us, the idea is to influence the discussion on the development of technology in a way that is responsible and human rights aligned. So that's, that's the objective uh, in terms of communicating. Uh, well, we are at the high level political forum today. Uh, what better forum to communicate it. But we are also working it with our member states, with, of course, Slovenia and others to, to ensure that this framework can be taken up by uh, organizations uh, conducting hackathons so that they use some of these criteria. And this is an iterative process. This framework is here today. Uh, you know, we had internal discussions whether we can really apply it because it can be quite unwieldy to find some of the solutions. So we already cut down some of the elements. But once we go through this call, we'll find out what works, what doesn't work with feedback from the people who are participating uh, this year, and then we'll come up. So it's an iterative process. And uh, hopefully uh, the community who've joined us today will also help nourish it. Uh, we are in this, uh, all of us together as uh, for the SDGs, do not leave anyone behind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, what a great call to action to everyone listening. I hope they heard. And if not, we're gonna share the video later. <laughs> um, I'd like to touch a little bit on the aspect that is of course also very important. We touched a little bit with Tommaso, which is the business side of this because we are having businesses apply and startups apply. It's not just research ideas. So um, Massimo, I would like to uh, hear your opinion on um, how do you think that such an international tool can, um, can affect the development essentially uh, in this landscape? And uh, a bit more specific question, um, 
what policies do you think would be most urgently needed um, for the, the development of such uh, cutting edge technologies to be applied to sustainable development goals? Is there a policy input that could be need, that could benefit us? First of all, I would like to say that this, with this first iteration of top 100, IRCA has uh, built a proof of concept, if you want. So like uh, in the second edition of this top 100, we can propose a, a stronger methodology, a stronger framework, and we also start to benefit from uh, network effects, if you want, because we are starting to build a strong partnership with uh, multinationals, with uh, investors around the center, the, the council that I coordinate is also building upon um, strong professionals that are also making strong careers in the in the business in the investment scene. So we are starting to enjoy this kind of multiple effects that uh, come from uh, these different sides of the of the coin. Regarding this news about network and the important involvement of UNESCO, we go to the initial part of the story when we met with, with John and our the UNESCO involvement is for me very important for the idea that just Pratek said on the importance to context-based solutions in technology and, and artificial intelligence. So if I had to tell you what is the most important avenue that I would run would be to look at how to move uh, towards uh, context-based solutions through uh, looking at this direction, that is the next direction that where also we are going in globalization, in uh, geopolitics, etc. So. It's what I think it's very important to think about in the future. For the business effects, we, we go towards, hopefully, through also the involvement of Amazon Web Services, we just closed an important partnership with them after a long discussion, towards also bringing in investors and also trying to build an accelerator program on a responsible AI and responsible technology. Thanks. Thank you, Massimo. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, unfortunately, we're running a little bit behind schedule, uh, or maybe we can say that we were we overplanned this uh, interesting debate. Um, but I would just like to maybe point out a little bit of a provocative question, and maybe this one would relate to Katie and Tommaso, and of course anyone else who can join. Um, it's often heard that um, the high standards that we envision uh, in the accountability related to AI. Uh, the the ethical aspects of course that if this um these high standards might inhibit progress or innovation and i'm certain yes <laughs> i'm certain that katie or tomaso have this idea if we imagine uh, a startup world um and we we expect everyone to develop their businesses according to such frameworks as this one Whoever wants to come first, Katie. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, I mean, this dichotomy between progress and respect of, of you know any kind of rights, any kind of ethical standards, is a long sung song in the AI ecosystem, as it is in just about any other ecosystem. To be honest, so there's nothing special about bringing it up uh, in the context of AI and SDG oriented solutions. Uh, but uh, I mean, progress for progress's sake, I mean, what does that really mean, right? I mean, we can have a big philosophical discussion about you know, exactly what progress means when it is not accompanied by respect of human rights and different ethical standards, different principles. But I think uh, what, what a good project is and what, pro what progress really is right now in the AI ecosystem is the implementation of an idea that comes with a vision that aligns with you know, a human-centric approach to AI and that coincides with a knowledgeable, positive, and willing compliance with emerging ethical standards in its operational domains. What I mean by that is that the fact that a project or venture addresses an SDG does not necessarily guarantee its ethical goodness or neutrality. And many times ethical criteria such as privacy or transparency or human autonomy will be at odds with the technical goals of projects, especially if the financial means of production are humble. But we have to identify these value trade-offs and they should be consciously identified within the larger goal of the project and accounted for. 
because a good SDG-oriented AI application should seek to internalize the ethical cost of its own production and implementation. Otherwise, we are indeed working at cross purposes, even when it comes to talking about technical progress. Thank you. This definitely needed to be said. <laughs> Tomasa, maybe you have a comment? Yeah, no, I, I, I really agree with, uh, with Katie, but perhaps uh, complementing on uh, what she, she said, uh, IRCAI and UNESCO, by integrating those elements of transparency and accountability, they're not posing like obstacles for startup or companies to do so. They're actually facilitating because you have to do this. If you're a startup or a company, you want to like uh, integrate, uh, you know, uh, techn uh, technology, in this case, uh, AI, Incre increasingly you have to comply with standards uh, like the GDPR, the right to explanation. You have to do that. Uh, the, 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 the question is not uh, whether you have to do that or not, it's how to do that, right? And, and whether the uh, IRCA UNESCO can provide guidance, coaching, this is a, a complementary, uh, uh, issues for discussion. And I'm going to give you an example. I was talking to, to um, a, a government official in, in Madagascar uh, the other day. And wherever I go, no matter where I go, uh, and I work quite uh, a lot in Africa, they always bring up the issues of AI. Uh, uh, they, they want to uh, develop uh, AI applications, so on and so forth. However, increasingly, I hear uh, something that is uh, concerning me a little bit, and it's is that they don't trust AI. Uh, the, the government official in, in Madagascar, he, he told me exactly this, that he didn't trust uh, AI. And I asked why. And what he said was that uh, we, we, we have AI, uh, we want to develop AI applications. However, we really don't understand uh, if AI get to a solution, uh, how it got to this solution, what were the criteria. And we want to do this, we need to uh, uh, integrate AI to solve complex problems, so, so on and so forth, but we need to kind of unpack the black box of AI, right? So this is, uh, this is, uh, this is part of the answer. The, the dilemma, and then I'm not going to get into details, uh, is that, uh, you know, we're talking about AI. AI is, is pretty uh, a broad uh, term. Uh, there, there are complex and very simple algorithms for very simple algorithms to perform very simple tasks. You can really like uh, explain easily to citizen, to whoever, uh, to stakeholders how this works. But what happens when you have complex algorithm and machine learning? How do you do this? So this is another uh, question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right now, I think we are a bit over schedule. So some other very interesting topics that were planned, unfortunately, won't have any space. But I would like to invite uh, John and Pratik, uh, John first, if you don't mind, to give your closing remarks, um, perhaps on the, uh, your idea, your wish on the top 100 next iterations and how the framework might affect um, the solutions itself. And Pratik, of course, um, what's, uh, what do you wish from the next iterations of top 100 to um, translate into the influence of the framework. I hope I was clear. How do you want the framework to develop? And John, how do you want the top 100 to develop with the framework? Sure, thank well, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, so I, I think it's, um, you know, we've been really fortunate in attracting very high quality applicants to the first round. And we believe that this gives us the momentum to hope that we can attract really excellent um, projects for the second round. And when I say excellent projects, I'm really thinking um, exactly as I said before, it's the uh, the way in which the AI is gelled with the application and the innovation is in the vision of how that actually can be used and how that can enhance the sustainable development in impact. Uh, and also the fact that it can be scalable. We're interested in solutions that can scale and become big international businesses and have the impact that we need in order to deliver on the uh, sustainable development goals uh, 2030. So I think those are our, our, our hope. And what we want to do is to be a meeting point for novel ideas and solutions so that there's an interchange where a good solution is seen. It can be picked up by another group, perhaps applied in a different uh, domain or a different context 
uh, and we'll start to get a, you know, a, a rolling effect where we can see uh, really a, a, a significant impact uh, of this approach. And I think those are you know, all of the aspects that have been discussed, the ethical aspects, the human rights, and the technological and the business are all coming together and need to be considered as a whole in order to be able to deliver uh, at the scale that we would like to through this initiative. Thank you. Um, thanks, thanks, John. Uh, so at our end, I think one of the things that we've noticed, we had about 100 solutions last year, hopefully same number this year. And this really could lead IRCAI to develop an observatory. And as John mentioned, the objectives of IRCAI and UNESCO are really to facilitate exchange of ideas and also act as a laboratory of ideas. So, so this kind of an observatory based on the framework and the solutions that are identified is, is one already a concrete output where people can look up what has been done, what needs to be done to contextualize a particular solution uh, and use it in another way and so on. So that's one. Uh, I, I think in terms of the evolution itself, it would be interesting to monitor some of the assumptions that we had while working on this framework, which Tommaso outlined now, uh, on whether people are actually integrating some of these human rights concerns and are they benefiting. So perhaps in the process, at the beginning of the call, once solutions are identified and selected, uh, and then to understand the impact whether the criteria which really force people to think along these dimensions or not, were they before considering inclusion, diversity in their way of uh, developing the solution or not. So I think some of those issues, we would probably need to follow up with the participants and monitor the impact, not only now, but in one year, and maybe even in five years of, uh, did any of these projects scale up? Uh, did they, uh, do they still exist? So I think that's what we are in. We are in the business of impact and impact happens over a period of time. So I think that would be uh, the aspiration. And uh, yeah, thank you. Well, thank you very much. So I believe this is the perfect time that we see what the new call is all about. Um, thank you very much to, to the panelists. Uh, I'm, I very much hope so that this year's Top 100 call is successful and uh, possibly maybe we meet at one of the events or UNESCO's events and have a longer discussion on these topics with the look back. So now I'd like to introduce uh, Davor Orlic, uh, who is the Chief Operations Officer at IRCAI, who's going to be presenting this year's call. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'll be, I'll be very quick, uh, Mr. Bosch. Um, let me just show you quickly, um, uh, just share the screen and show this, right? So if you go on this site, just drop it a link in the chat. And this is the essentially where the call for proposals or submissions is. Um, uh, the judging process, um, is the same as uh, last year. We have updated that with the new methodology. Um, the timeline stays almost equally, um, the same same length. Um, end of September, we probably think uh, we will know the 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 short the the final set of 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 the of the 100 list probably end of December. Uh, we plan on having an event in January then to sort of like showcase. Uh, uh, we couldn't do it this year uh, in person, but uh, and we've done it online. However, I think if we gather people together, it might be a bit just a bit nicer. Um, the, the new thing is that we have a new partner set. We are partnering with uh, um, Amazon Web Services this year, um, together with the old partners. Um, if you go for the next page, you're going to have the call for the, the form for the proposals. Um, essentially, it's the same one, but updated. And on the back end, we've got a new set of um, um, criteria for the reviewers. So we want um, more technologies, essentially, just a bit more information about um, the choices. We stay with excellence and scientific quality. We are not disregarding that. Scaling 
of the impact to SDGs are very important to us. Scaling of the AI solution, like John mentioned. Um, we have expanded the ethics and human rights side of things with really good hints on uh, for the applicants to sort of like um, shed more light on what they do on this topic. And then finally, and we're opening up for business aspects. Uh, and if these um, applications have any scientific, again, we have a very strong uh, field for science in this sense. Um, uh, publications are also important for us. They don't need to be scientific. They can also be of a different kind. And a very short sort of like insight into what and what people's needs at the moment are. Um, so the call is now open and I invite everyone to pitch in and to share most of all um, the benefits as, as you've seen um, um, are quite wide ranging and international in that sense. And um, that's all. Um, uh, I wish you a great summer and I wish you a great continuation of the HLPF uh, event and um, hope to see you soon.